Hi everyone, it's Nola and Annie and welcome to Sex and Stuff. Today we're talking all about birth control and how you can prevent unwanted pregnancies. So there are a lot of different options out there. The first option we can do are behavioral methods. Now when we think of behavior, it's something that you do. So behavior would be abstinence. Abstinence is where you don't engage in any type of sex, whether it's oral, anal, or vaginal. 100% you will not get a pregnancy or you won't get an STD. Correct. Okay. There's also types of methods called the withdrawal method. This is where the man or boy will pull his penis out before he ejaculates into the female. Now we know this method doesn't always work. And why is that? Because there can be sperm and pre-ejaculate. Yes. So and, and this is a way that you can get pregnant or have an unwanted STD. So even if you're pulling out before he fully ejaculates, you can get pregnant off of pre-ejaculation or pre-cum or pre-sperm, okay? It's not always the best way to protect yourself. No, it's not always. The last behavior method is the fertility awareness method. And this is where females recognize when they're ovulating. So when we're ovulating, we do not want to have sex. But do we always know when we're ovulating? No. It's really hard to tell when you're actually ovulating. A lot of people might use an app on your cell phone to track your period, and that app might tell you you're ovulating from this date to this date, but that that's not always accurate. They don't know. That's based off of a guess and the average, and your body could be different. Right. So that's not always an accurate method as well. Okay. So those are three of the behavior methods that you can practice. Now there's also barrier methods that can prevent you from getting pregnancy. And what we mean by barrier is where something blocks the sperm from reaching that egg. So in those cases, that would be a male condom or an internal condom. And this is also known as a female condom. So both of these methods can be used as barrier methods, okay? Um, you, they work efficiently and effectively when you use them correctly. So you follow, make sure to follow the instructions when you're using these methods of protection. Okay. It's also important to note that barrier methods is also the best, me best method to protect yourself against unwanted STDs. Exactly. So you have to remember too, when you are performing oral sex on a male, use a condom. When you're performing oral sex on a female, use a dental dam. If you're not familiar what a dental dam is, look to our second video and we talk about what a dental dam is. Okay. So then we want to talk about hormonal methods. Okay. So hormonal methods are forms of birth control that prevent you from ovulating, prevent you from releasing that egg. So that hormone and that form of birth control prevents you from releasing that egg. If there's no egg there, we can't get pregnant. So there's short-term forms of birth control and there's long-term forms of birth control. What I mean by short-term forms are that they are good for a month or even three months, okay? So we look at birth control options that are good for a month. They would be the birth control pill, uh, the Nuva Ring and the patch. Birth control um, that's good for three months or 12 weeks would be considered the Depo shot, okay? So all of those are good short-term forms of birth control, but remember, once you get off of them, can you get pregnant that next month? Absolutely, mm -hmm. okay? And even if I'm using this method and this is all I'm using, what do I, can I still get? You can still get an STD. This is only to prevent pregnancy. Right. It's also important to note that you have to follow the directions for these mm -hmm. types of birth control very closely. Mm -hmm. Otherwise you increase your risk of pregnancy. And our friends at Planned Parenthood have great information on their website that explains exactly how these forms of birth control work. So check out our friends at Planned Parenthood. We link um, their website into the description of this video. So they've got great information. Um, last but not least, there are also long-term forms of birth control. So you have the IUD and you have the Implanon or the Explanon, okay? These forms of birth control are good for five, six, 12 years, okay? Um, and you have to go to the doctor to get them. You have to go to the doctor to get these short-term forms of birth control, okay? These are about 99% effective. These are about 91 to 94% effective. So long-term forms of birth control are longer. They, they last longer, they have more protection, okay? Um, they're gonna have that hormone in there again that prevents you from ovulating, that prevents you from releasing that egg. This goes into your arm. This device goes into the female's uterus. Your doctor will be able to talk you through all of these options if these are options for you that you want to use, okay? But what happens if this is the only form of protection I'm on? You still can contract an STD. Correct. And also, once these options are done, so if you 
hit the mark where this form of birth control has expired, you need a new form of birth control or you can get pregnant, mm -hmm. okay? There's also forms of birth control that are non-hormonal, and that would be the copper IUD, okay? So the copper IUD has copper in the IUD because sperm and copper do not mix. They aren't friends. So if you are looking for non-hormonal, the copper IUD would be a great source again. So make sure you check out our friends at Planned Parenthood. They've got great information on their website that talks more in detail about these forms of protection, okay? Um, a lot of times we get asked questions, can my, will my parents know if I'm on birth control? How does that work? So in Iowa, minors or people under the age of 18 can access birth control without a parent or guardian's permission. Right. And so those would be Title, title 10 clinics, okay? Uh, an example of the Title 10 clinic would be like Planned Parenthood. This is a clinic that provides birth control, provides STD testing, provides pregnancy testing, provides medication if you have an STD as well. Um, a lot of these clinics work on a sliding scale fee, which means they kind of base off on income, how much you would make, and then they ask you to pay a certain amount of that income or a certain amount of that fee. So that's kind of a sliding fee. Again, if you go to one of these clinics and you're unfamiliar with what a sliding fee scale is, excuse me, ask them. They are happy and welcome to talk to you about this information. Also, if you go to a clinic and are scared about giving your insurance information mm -hmm. or whether or not your parents will see it, just ask them at the clinic. They'll explain it to you. They're used to having people come in who just want to access um, family planning, birth control, yeah. Um, health care services that necessarily don't want their parents to see it or their partner. So just ask and they'll give you the correct answer. And you also have to remember though too, if you decide to use your parents' health insurance, your parents will get a bill and that bill will provide information on why you were seen at the doctor's office. So these are all things to think about when you're thinking about getting on some form of long-term or short-term birth control. So let's do a quick recap. The methods are Behavioral, mm -hmm. that includes the pull-out method. Right. The fertility awareness. Fertility awareness. And abstinence. And abstinence. Okay, then it's also barrier methods, which would be a condom or insert internal condom, okay? And then it's also hormonal. Which would be the pill, NuvaRing, the Depo-Provera shot, or the patch. Right. Okay, and then you have long-term, which would be like the implanon, the explanon. It's that bar that goes in your arm or the IUD, the device that goes into your uterus. So these are all the devices that you know that can protect yourself. But what your best bet is, is to always use a form of protection that's gonna protect you against both pregnancy and STDs, okay? Because if you're not using one, you're using the other, one of these can happen, okay? So again, make sure you check out the information below that in the description of this because we're gonna have some really great links to other great resources and partners that we use to talk about birth control. I think that's all for today. I think that's all for today. Thanks everyone. Bye.